Welcome to Noah Yodding's video check-in for Catamaran Kobuksan. Kobuksan is a 2020 Lagoon 42. Let's get you on board and show you how she works. To start Kobuksan's engines, turn on the power to the panels. The sound you hear now is the ventilation system starting for each engine room. Ensure both your gear levers are in neutral first. They should be vertical, like this, pointing to the neutral section. To check this, push in the button that disengages the gear and move forward. Once you pull this back to neutral, it will pop out and you know you are in neutral. To start the engines, hold down on start. To excite the revs, push in the neutral button and move the gear lever forward. Once your engines are running, make sure you check the exhaust to show that the water is flowing through the engines and running the cooling system. Before engaging into gear, bring the levers back to neutral and hear them pop into the neutral position. Then you can engage in gear. Be very careful when operating the gears on board Kobuksan as the propellers are behind the rudder and very close to the stern of the boat. Make sure you check that you have no lines and nothing obstructing and no swimmers around the propellers before engaging gear. To turn the engines off, hold down stop. And then turn the power off to the panel. At the helm station you have the PNG chart plotter which is hooked into all of the equipment on the boat including the autopilot. The chart plotter is touch screen so you can zoom and pan using the touch screen system. The AIS is also hooked into the chart plotter and you can query vessels. You have multiple options for your displays by pressing this button and going to your sailing information or picking a combination chart. You also have a second display here, which can display multiple different pages of information. Click this button to change your page. The autopilot is located in the top right here. Press auto to engage autopilot and it will set heading on your heading hold. To increase your bearing to starboard, you can push either plus 10 degrees or single degrees. It will change your course to the number listed. To change to port and to push standby to helm manually. Your autopilot is also controlled on the chart plotter here. You can adjust your heading like this or hit standby. If this section with autopilot here is highlighted with orange, then when you turn the zoom wheel, it will change your heading. Be careful of this if you think you're about to zoom on the chart. If you select the chart and that is highlighted with the orange ring, you can then zoom and pan onto the chart. In the port side lazarette, you have all of your extra equipment here. Inside here you have your extra dock line, emergency tiller, pump for the dinghy, funnel, deck brushes times two, boat hook, flagpole, oars for the dinghy, and a bucket. It's also your manual bilge pump handle. There's two of these. There is one manual bilge pump on each side of the yacht. In order to use this, take the manual bilge pump handle, lift the flap and plug this in, and then pump to remove the water from the bilge. There's one of these on the port side of the boat and in the same position on the starboard side of the boat. Kobuksan shore power cable inputs are on the port side at the stern of the yacht. You have two cables here, 230 volts for the shore power for the batteries and battery chargers and power to the boat, and then one for the clemmer, the air conditioning, also 230 volts. Inside the port engine bay, you have the emergency stop for the engine. If your engine is not starting or not working, this may have been bumped to the position stop. Push this in and put it on to run. Here you have your shore power switches and main battery switches. 
This is the main battery switch for the engine. This is on in this position and off like this. This is the negative for the engine. This is the couplage parallel switch. If your power is so low that you cannot start your engines, you can join your house and engine batteries to start your engine, then turn this off. The main breakers for the shore power are located here. If your shore power is not working, come into this engine locker and check your shore power switches. The starboard engine bay is very similar to the port. The emergency stop button for the engine is here and the main batteries and switches for the engine are here. This does not have the couplage button, but the domestic battery switch is located in here. In this position it is on, and in this position it is off. Here you also have the emergency tiller access. This is the same on both sides of the yacht. To use the emergency tiller, remove this cap and then put the emergency tiller post down on top of the rudder post. Kobokson has two engines, therefore two diesel tanks. They're located here on the stern. When filling these, make sure you take off the cap with your winch handle and fill slowly as to avoid the diesel overflowing. To check your fuel levels, use the control panel below. Press this button to check fuel tank number one. Press again to check fuel tank number two. Cockpit shower is located on the starboard quarter, the starboard stern. Open this flap, pull out your cockpit shower. Turn on and off by pushing this switch down or up laterally to the number here. The mix is done from hot to cold by turning clockwise and anti-clockwise. Have it somewhere in the middle for, for, for warm water. When you're finished make sure you turn this off so that you are not accidentally running water out while you are not using the shower. The gas bottle is located in this locker just in front of the cockpit table. To connect your gas bottle place the valve over, secure the gas bottle in place, Turn on by turning anti-clockwise. When you have finished, turn off the bottle by turning clockwise. Kobokson has a number of cockpit cushions all around for your enjoyment. These also have inbuilt backrests on them. To lift these, lift up like this to the desired height and hear the click and they will hold as you sit and lie against them. To reset these flat, all the way and down. These two cushions here belong in front of the windscreen in this spot. You can secure these with these Velcro tabs and the Velcro strip under here. These cockpit cushions also have the adjustable headrests. Push all the way up and down to lay flat and adjust the position by lifting. To slide back the hard top cover, lift up and push backwards. To access the lockers, you will need to remove these Velcro tabs. and then lift the locker. The generator is located in this forward starboard locker. If the power is not running once the generator is running, look at the generator fuse switchboard which is located in under here. Open this panel and check that your fuses are on. In this position, showing green, they are off. Make sure they are flipped up and showing on. The main battery switches for the generator are also in this locker. In this position here, they are on. Underneath the second locker, you have the anchor well with the chain, your spare anchor, and the water tanks. The water tank fill point for the yacht is located here. You have one water tank, 300 liters. Undo this with the winch handle and fill your water from here. When anchoring on Cobalt Sun, first remove the bridle line from the cleat. Then remove the safety line from the anchor chain. This pin will come out, so make sure you replace it properly and tighten it before letting it go. The anchor windlass control is located in this lazarette. The windlass control has two buttons, up and down. Remember to operate the anchor, your engine must be running 
and it is best to put your gear levers in neutral and excite the revs to 1500 to 2000 revs in order to charge the batteries. To lower the anchor, press the down button. You will need to let a little bit of chain out and then help the anchor across the bowsprit. When you have set the length of your anchor correct, you hook on the bridle to the chain link. And then lower the anchor so that the weight is on the bridle, pulling evenly off the two holes. When raising the anchor, once the bridle comes over the bowsprit, remove it and put it safely away so it does not get caught. Always raise the last part of your anchor slowly so that you do not whip the anchor up too fast and damage the boat. Once the anchor is all the way up, secure the safety line again and put the bridle back around the cleat. Return the remote to the locker. Remember to engage in forward gear, return the levers to neutral so that the buttons pop out and then engage forward. Gobokson has two electric winches up here at the helm station. To operate these, you have two speeds. Number one is fast. Number two is slow. When wrapping your lines on here, ensure hands are all clear while doing this and go very slowly. There is a lot of power in these electric winches and if you over tighten you can break whatever you are winching in. Kobuksun has a fully battened mainsail and a self tacking furler jib. Your technician will have checked your sails to make sure they are in good working order before your charter. If you would like to check these, put these up with at least two people and check for any defects. If you have any issues, take photos with your mobile phone and report these to the office. When raising your mainsail, first ensure you undo the mainsail bag and make sure all of the lines are clear of the sail. Ease your main sheet a little bit and then put your main halyard onto the winch. When raising the sail, ensure that if there is any load coming onto the winch and you're unsure of why, you stop and make sure the line is clear. As the sail is going up, you need to make sure that it does not catch on any of the lazy lines. Make sure all of your reef lines are open in case there is any tension left on those. Be careful not to run the electric winch constantly as you will burn down the batteries much faster. Once the sail is all the way to the top, best to do the last bit of tension with the manual winch so that you know how much pressure you are putting on the sail. When lowering the sail, take the pressure off the clutch by pulling a bit of line through, open the clutch, and then lower the sail into the lazy bag. As you lower the sail, bring in your reef lines. Once the sail is almost all the way down, you will need to help the last bit into the bag and then clip up the bag. Gobokson has a self-tacking jib 
to roll out the jib, put your jib sheet on the winch, put your furling line on the aft winch, ease the furling line while bringing in the jib sheet. Now control your sheet of your jib with this one line. To bring the jib back in, pull in on the furling line on the lower winch while easing the jib sheet. Again, maintain some tension on the jib sheet as you ease it out so that it wraps the sail around the furler nice and tight. The main control panel is located here on the starboard hull steps. Here you have your voltage for your battery house system. This is the water heater and the battery charger. These two switches are for the AC plugs that are throughout the boat. If this light is showing, the AC power is connected to the shore. If this light is showing reverse polarity, then there is a problem with the power on the dock and you need to check with the dock staff to sort that out. It is not a problem if this is running, the system will manage it. Here you control all of your 12 volt system, the electric cabin lights, the fridge unit, navigation instruments such as your GPS, autopilot and VHF, this auxiliary plug for here, the deck floodlight, the anchor light, and then your sailing lights are here. On this side, both navigation and steaming lights are on for when you're under motor. In the center, all are off, and on the right, just the navigation lights are on for sailing. Here you can check the levels of your water tanks, your batteries, and your fuel tanks. Press on the one you want to see. Fuel tank one is full. Press again to see fuel tank two, water tanks, and your battery levels at 13.6 volts, charging at seven amps. Here you have your main controls for your shore power versus generator, and your climat or your air conditioning generator versus shore power. At the moment, this switch is down and this is on for both, meaning it is connected to your shore power. If you want to change this to your generator, you need to start your generator. First of all, turn off the power to the shore. Hold start. It will prime as much as it needs automatically and then start. Hold the entire time. Once it stops flashing yellow and flashes green, your generator should be running fine. You now switch this up and flick on to the generator. Now your 220 volt prizes plugs and water heater battery charger will run off the generator. Same with Klimat, flick this over here. Now we have 230 volts running on both of these off the generator. To turn the generator off, hold down stop. Return your switches to shore power. This, light, this switch here is to turn on the underwater blue lights outside under the two stern hulls. This here is the inverter control. When you turn this on, it will run 230 volts to all of the plugs in the boat off the 12 volt system. The voltage will be shown here. Be careful not to run this for too long and only really run it when the engine is on so that there is a charge coming into the yacht. Your bilge pump is activated by this switch here. Switch to barboard for the port side pump. In the middle, both pumps are off and to tri-board for the starboard side pump. At the nav station, inside we have the charts for the local area, the pilots and light lists, manuals for the Lagoon 42 yacht, Handles for undoing water and diesel tanks, navigation equipment, the keys for the yacht, and the hand bearing compass. You also have a flashlight and binoculars. Here you can see the panel for the main power system and the VHF. The power system will show you the level of the batteries and how much is being used or gained at the moment. When it says plus 0.9 amps, that means it is charging at 0.9 amps, and we are currently at 100%. The VHF radio is also located here at the nav station. To turn this on, hold the power button. You can change your channel by rotating this knob here and your volume 
by this one here to push in and turn you adjust the sensitivity the international distress and calling channel is channel 16 and most artsy marinas and other port authorities around Croatia are on channel 17. All of your power management fuses and breakers are located in this cupboard in the starboard hull. At the top you have your anchor windlass control, the two winches, the battery charger and the water pump. In the base of the cupboard you have all of the controls for your 230 volt connections. In every cabin and the saloon on Cobalt Sun, you have an air conditioning control panel like this one. Hold power to turn on and off. Select your mode by pushing the mode button to either heat, cool, or dehumidify. Adjust your temperature with these buttons here. And your fan speed with this button here. Remember not to place any clothes and things on top of the vent if you're running the air conditioning. If you have any problems with your air conditioning system during your stay on Cobalt Sun, contact the NOAA service team immediately. Each bathroom on board Cobalt Sun is fitted with a manual pump toilet and a holding tank. This is the aft port toilet which is identical to the aft starboard toilet. Both holding tank valves for the forward and aft Tanks are located in this bathroom in this cupboard here. Each of these valves control a holding tank on this side of the yacht. In this position they are closed. In this position here they are open. Close these valves when you are in the marina or close by other vessels close to land. This one here is for the forward holding tank and this is for the aft holding tank. All of the shower drain pumps are automatic and are linked to the running of the shower itself. If there is excess water in the bottom of the shower when you're finished showering, run the shower into the sink to get the rest of the water out. To operate the manual pump toilet, you have two positions in which this can be in. Over this way, with this symbol, it will pump water only out. When it is switched this way, it will pump water in and out at the same time. When it is to this setting, the bowl will naturally fill to a certain level. When you are finished going to the toilet, remove the waste by putting the switch in this position. Then switch it to flush and pump 15 to 20 times to remove all the waste from the bowl and pump it up and down into the holding tank. When you are finished, switch this over to the other side and remove the excess water. Push the handle down and turn to lock into position. Remember, nothing that doesn't come out of your body goes down the toilet. Put the toilet paper and other sanitary products in the bins provided inside the locker. Safety equipment is located in this seat here. Here we have all the life jackets for the boat, thermal blankets, axe for emergency, the jack lines, life link for putting down the side of the boat if you are sailing in rough conditions, harnesses and tethers, fog horn, Day shapes for anchoring and motor sailing, the bungs for the through hole fittings and a spare transponder bung, flares, sea anchor drogue, dry bags for you to take as an emergency bag, spares for the engine, impeller and belts, first aid, fire blanket, toolkit and two fire extinguishers. The gas shut off valve for the oven and the gas hobs is located in this cupboard here. In this position, both valves are on in line with the pipe turn off by turning across the line of the pipe. Only have these on when you are cooking, turn them off when you're finished and then turn the gas off at the bottom. Cobalt Sun has three fridges. One is a top mounted chest freezer and fridge here. This is a freezer so if you want to freeze things turn it down otherwise have it on the minimum setting to save power. Also has this fridge here. The controls for this fridge are up here, 
set this to about the middle at number four or five to maintain your power levels. Also has this fridge just outside the doors. All of these fridges run off the same switch on the control panel for fridge units. Cobbleton is equipped with a high field center console dinghy with a 20 horsepower Honda motor. This is on davits. To release this, you need to take this line up to the winch, take the tension on the winch and then open this clutch. Undo the safety lines, unclip the extra hooks from each side and undo the ties. Once you have all this under control, open the clutch and ease down the davits and yacht and boat slowly. Once the boat is floating in the water, close the clutch so the davits do not fall on the dinghy. Unclip the bridle lines from the tender. To start the engine, first ensure there is nothing fouled around the propeller and that your stern line and bow line are inside the boat. Make sure you're in neutral. Turn the key and turn the key to start. Once the engine is running, make sure you have water flowing out of the cooling outtake. To engage in forward gear, pull up the handle and push forward. Turn off the dinghy, turn the key. When raising back up, clip your bridle back on to the davits. When bringing the dinghy back up, take the davit line up to the electric winch, ensure the clutch is closed at the davits on the back, and then bring this up slowly on the electric winch. Ensure the clutch is closed, and do up the safety clips and tie on the extra legs. Thank you for watching this video check-in for the 2020 Lagoon 42. I hope you have an amazing week. See you when you get back.